Okay, I think it's a it's around time. It's it is 10 p.m. in Japan time on Friday. So this is the weekly tutorial live for Houdini, and this is the 78th episode. And the topic for today is to create a kind of flower growth simulations on top of a an input geometry which grow great gradually using a trail path and the one that I'm gonna show you today is to create something like these a gradiently growing flower on top of an input geometry using A solver. Okay. And this is what I'm going to do. Okay. So before we get it into the uh, the approach from scratch, I'm going to show you the pre I'm going to briefly show you the the algorithm that I'm going to use today. First thing first, I am going to create a this single flower which grows from none to bloom using a simple kinfx function starting from an arc and create a create things like this one, which I don't see it. Create a simple blooming animation using fused uh, frames like these procedurally and made it into a three dimensional geometry with a thickness like these. Which is going to be later on replaced with a copy to node <coughs> on a specific points based on the gradient uh, values on the surface. Now after I created this uh, single flower animation, next thing I'm going to do is to create a path on top of the input surface. For example, if I want to use this uh, test geometry, squab test geometry, what I'm going to do is to first of all set a starting point and the end point. Now in this case, the, blue, the yellow circle will be the starting point and the blue uh, sphere is going to be the, uh, the boundary for the goals. And I'm going to use the sh find shortest pass node to create a path from start to end like these and this path is going to be used as the trail path where the where the <coughs> the growth parameter or growth values will be uh, run on top of the surface now what I mean is that first of all by creating this trail path I can now run a particle animations on top of this pass like these and based on this position of this particles I am going to colorize or gradiently apply a value on top of the surface like this you can see that gradually you can see that gradually the surface color is changing this color is corresponding to kind of a life value uh, which was has been applied which has been affected by those point positions and once this point position once this particle uh, comes close to the surface then surface starts to grow from life 0 to something life 40 or 5, 50 then based on those values, I'm going to choose how the how flower will grow <coughs> based on those values. Now that I have those values on the surface, 
I can now uh, relight this values on top of surface together with the frame value from the flower then I'm gonna <coughs> copy the surface uh, the flower geometry on top of the surface based on the color or based on the light value and this is it this is the result that you get and since the surface is constantly growing from 0 to the maximum maybe 40 to 50 the flower will grow correspond to those gradient value okay so that's pretty much it then after that you can merge it with the original geometry and then there you go you get the original geometry and the growing flower procedural flower so the algorithm itself is pretty simple yeah once you know it and that's what I am going to try to create today from scratch okay so let's do this so question are you going to show how to animate this pedal from scratch yes I am going to uh, procedurally using some small technique from KinFX okay everything is going to be done from scratch nothing imported from external uh, library or anything so you just need to have a Houdini application that's it all right let's do this so starting from creating a geometry node uh, first thing first I am going to create a test geometry that I would like to use it for I mean any geometry is fine since I have tested with this squab I'm gonna use the same squab to test it out All right and um, first of all I I don't really need those textures for the testing so temporarily I'm gonna delete those so I'm gonna use the attribute delete node to delete the UV and maybe I can keep the UV but I don't really need the material primitive all right and now what I, want, what I want to do next is to define the starting point and the end point for the path for the for the, uh, uh, the particle to run through right I mean I can do that first or maybe I can create the flowers first well let's do the surface first okay to, so to do that um, I'm going to use a control object which is going to be created on top of the OBJ network maybe using a new node to define the position of the starting point and the end point or end uh, positions now I am going to limit the number of the starting position with one new node I'm gonna change the the rendering of this new node to a circle like this and it might be a good idea that I if I can see where uh, if this um, to visualize or use this circles range as it is to cover the geometry where the point should be used as a starting point so in order to do that I am going to control this well, I'm gonna use the value of this start null node <coughs> maybe a scale translate or rotate inside the geometry node okay so let's do this and another thing I need is the goal for the goal part I might need a uh, multiple number of goals but for now let's just have one single node to make it simple ok 
Okay, so I'm gonna make this color to green and for the start node, I'm going to change the wireframe color to something yellow so that I can see the difference. Alright, now let's try to change the position. So let's set the starting point position close to the tail of this Squaf and for the goal I'm gonna make this come to somewhere around here where the nose is around um, and let's make this size of the sphere bigger by using like this and let's assume that I can use this sphere to cover the geometry to use it as a boundary node, a uh, boundary geometry to set the goal point. Okay, let's try to change its shape as well and rotate it like these. Since if I could do that, that'll be very useful later on. Okay, same for these. Before the starting point, I'm going to try to change the scale. Nothing really special here. I'm just doing it manually. Alright, something like this, pretty randomly. Alright, so <clears throat> after doing this, I'm gonna refer to these. Uh, sphere geometry inside uh, the geo node. Okay. All right. So uh, let's do this. And in order to do that, uh, what I am going to do is to use a two detail wrangle attribute wrangle. First of all, I'm going to use the attribute wrangle set as detail and import the start uh, null node on top of the OBJ network. So start pass. Okay, now first of all, I am going to refer to the, the translate, meaning the position of this null node. Which can be achieved, which can be retrieved by using a chv channel vector uh, function, which is under obj network, and the name was start. Okay, and the channel name is t, I think. For the translate, All right? And what else? I have scale. So the scale is CHV OBJ start and S in this case. And I have I also have rotation. So rot is which is in degrees and it's an Euler value and I think it is an X, Y, Z order so CHB OVJ start and rotation okay now for the rotation we need to in order to apply it to a point as an attribute we need to change it uh, I mean I am going to use the copy to point to move the sphere on top of the newly created points which was derived from the starting point positions so in order to do that we need to define the rotation as a normal vector normal and up vector value instead of the rotation itself so to do that we need to convert this degree value in Euler <coughs> into a radians and as a two vector values 
one for the normal direction and one for the up direction. So in order to do that, we first need to convert the Euler value, which is in XYZ, to a quaternion, which is XYZW, and from degrees to Euler, uh, from degrees to radians. So let's see how we can do that. So if we have Euler value, Euler, we can convert to a quaternion using this function called Euler to quaternion. And in order to convert it, you need to have the Euler rotational value, and which is in radians. So we need to convert from degrees to radians. We also need to consider the order. If we want to do the order in x, y, z, the order number is zero. So we can just say zero here. So let's use this vector four, which is in a quaternion value is equal to Euler to quaternion and what we want to convert is this rotation but this is in degrees right now so we need to convert it into radians radians and the order is x y zero so the order number is zero all right so now that we have a quaternion we can now convert I mean, we can now get the normal direction, the up direction, by rotating the the z-axis and the y-axis value here. So let's create a z-axis as a normal. Set 0, 0, 1, which is going to be the unit z vector value. And for up vector, we are, I'm going to create a 0, 1, 0 is a y axis value now in order to rotate these we can just use this quaternion to rotate these vectors using a function called q rotate i think that was the name uh, q rotate yeah this is it you rotate so we can use this quaternion to rotate the vector and the return you get the rotated vector value all right so we can update the normal by using a q rotate using the quaternion and for the up vector we can use the same q rotate with this quaternion with the up okay now the up uh, the normal and up vector has been updated using these uh, quaternion which is derived from this rotational values from the null node <coughs> okay i think it, we are ready to use this to uh, create a new point so let's create a new point at point the position we want to add the point to is this pause retrieve from the translate node uh, translate parameter then we can set the scale using a set point attrib zero scale with this sc value and for the rotation, instead of setting these values, we can set the normal and the up vector. So let's use the same set point attrib for the normal. We're going to set this norm that we have created. And for the up vector, I'm going to set the up with this up that I have just created. All right and let's also set the group so that this point is counted as a start point so i'm going to name the group named as start okay and there you okay seems like i am getting a a bit too big geometry right here seems like the <clears throat> scale is not corresponding to the the original the the the, the diagrams the yellow wireframe diagrams so let's 
scale. Let's make this scale a bit smaller to see what will make this the exact same size as this wireframe. So 0.25 should do the job. All right. So now you can see that the sphere that I have just copied with these points that I've just added corresponds to the positions, rotation, and the scale of this original new node wireframe. Okay, now if I change the start positions, the geometry, the sphere also change it, corresponds to those positions. Okay, so by changing the position and scale and the rotation inside the OBJ network, I can now use this uh, to control the geometry the inside the drone node as a sphere and since I have the sphere I can use it to I can use it as a boundary to cover the original test geometry to check whether the point is inside this boundary geometry or not okay okay I have a few questions from moneyball9 if this was an animated character, how would you link the sphere controls to follow along with the mesh? Uh, if you want to do that, then I think um, if you have uh, animated characters, I guess it depends on whether the topology changes along the frames, but uh, assuming that the topology doesn't change, meaning the number of points doesn't change for the for those animated characters, you can apply a kind of a group to this animated uh, character. Like, for example, let's say you can apply a point groups to some uh, points on a characters, like a tail or anywhere. <clears throat> let's say as a tail, then use that group to positions those control point rather than manually placing it. <clears throat> that might be a uh, one choice, I guess. But that's on that only works if the topology doesn't change. If the topology doesn't really change, if the if it deforms and changes the number of points, then the the same method doesn't really work. And for those patterns, maybe you need to analyze the geometry. Maybe I don't know, <clears throat> calculate the curvatures or anything. Some characteristics. On a mesh <clears throat> to define. Okay, so yeah, constant mesh point ID should work for sure. All right, another question. Explain the set function a bit more, please set function is to use to create a vector value or matrix in this case I have used it to create a uh, vector value I think this one so by using set I have three input the first one is X second one is Y and third one is Z if you want to create a quaternion which is the vector 4 then you have another one more value separate by comma and the last value will be treated as W if you want to make a matrix then you have <coughs> you can have nine values inside a set or you can have set inside a set to create at the matrix like you have you can have three sets inside another set because 3 by 3 matrix is like having three vectors inside one container or something like that <clears throat> how do you set how do the set knows what parameters object to control constant mesh points how do the set knows what parameter object to control not sure what you mean by that. Um, I'm not controlling anything right here. I'm just creating a vector 
here which is not really related to anything just the variable just a new variable here <clears throat> if you know if you mean by these ones you can just go to the the obj network and see right here and the one that I'm referring to right now is these values translate rotate and scale and in order to know those parameter values you can go to the parameter uh, interface or edit interface and you go to the translate or rotate or scale where you want to get the values and there you see these the name of the values which is called as T for the translate R for the rotation and S for the scale these are the uh, name which I'm referring to and this is under a OBJ network the name of the node is start start and the name of the uh, <coughs> parameter is R T R or S so the way you write to reference is like this under OBJ network under start node parameter T like that <coughs> Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. And where was I? Now that I have those, um, now that I have uh, referenced a start point, let's do the same things for the goal point as well. So I'm just going to copy these for the goal. And let's rename the start to go. Okay. Anything else? Not much, I think. Yep, just works like this. Okay, let's also change the sphere to polygon so that I can use it with other meshes. I can relate with other meshes. Makes the frequency a bit higher in value to make it smooth sphere. Okay, now I have two sphere geometry which can be used as a boundary. So let's try to create a point group to this um, <coughs> test geometry to define which point belongs to a start point and which point belongs to a goal point by using group node so connect this group node here let's set this to point let's start with the start group I'm gonna create a start group and use the keep in bonding regions with this bonding object option and I am going to connect this oops, I'm going to connect this uh, start point related, related sphere to the second input of this group. Now if I see it, the point which is covered by this boundary is going to have this start um, group, start point group. If you press this icon here, you'll be able to see the highlighted points which is covered by this uh, boundary. Same for those on uh, nose. I don't know if it's called as nose, nose or anything. Uh, let's do the same things for the goal. I'm going to create another group node. And let's name this to set this to point and set this to goal and check in the keep in boundary region bounding regions and set this to bounding object like this there you go now you have a set of points set as start and set of points set as goal <coughs> okay now i have two set of points i am going to create a path from start to goal using a find shortest pass node 
Now currently the the edge is too squarish and not too much edges. So I'm gonna increase the number of edges by remeshing the base geometry. So let's apply a remesh node. And let's make this high res a bit high res, maybe a bit more. 0 0.05, something around this should do a great job. Okay, I think it's enough uh, edges. Now I can start using a find shortest path node to find the shortest path from the start points to end points. Find shortest path. Okay, from start to goal. Now let's change the option from each start, uh, from any start to each end. We'll create, just choose the closest point, starting point, and use the all the end points as a goal. If I change this to from each start to each end, maybe that will give too much edges. Now I have like ten hundred thousand edges or that hundred thousand pass that's too much. So I'm just gonna choose this from any start to each end and that will reduce the number of pass to still a lot but one thousand five hundred. Now I can see that it's not really covering the whole geometry, so let's try to change the goal. Uh, boundary a little bit. Maybe I should increase the number of <coughs> um, pa uh, this boundary geometry or make the boundary geometry itself bigger. And to do that, go back to this one right here. And I think it's a good idea to see which part is being used as a start point and which part is used as a goal point. Point. So I'm going to use the color node to analyze or to just visualize the start group and the goal group. Simple color node based on the point group. Okay, like this. Okay, and let's go back to the OBJ network and see I change this positions now I can see which part is being <coughs> applied as a goal now in order to cover the whole geometry so that the path can go from one point to the whole place I guess I should need to set the goal somewhere around here to these legs to the head as well maybe to the backside as well so to do that one one way to, is to make the whole thing bigger. This whole thing bigger like this. Or make multiple goal geometry. Now for now I'm gonna... I wanna make it simple to run until the goal. So I'm gonna <coughs> make the goal geometry bigger. But later on if I have time I'll try to make a multiple goal geometry. And to do that, it, I think it's a good idea to uh, manage the number of goals using something like Python script. So if I have time today, let's do that as well. All right, so looks like it's covering the whole positions where I want to set as a goal. Good enough. Okay, going back to the geometry node and see where the pass goes. Alright, so looks like it is covering the whole geometry for sure. Maybe I can move the start point a little bit back or the back side. Somewhere around here. Alright, <coughs> now, but it is good, but I can see that the pass number is a bit too much, so let's also reduce the number of paths so that 
<clears throat> I don't have to use all of them. I think I can just randomly pick those paths from those total number of paths. Maybe in total 100 or 200 should do the job. So in order to do that, I am first going to shuffle the order of the primitive, meaning the path geometry, <coughs> using the sort node for the primitive to random and just set a random seed. Okay, now the order has been shuffled. I can now just use a delete node or anything and remove the number of <coughs> um, primitive or get the number get number of uh, primitives by saying from zero to hundred you'll be able to get hundred or maybe hundred one primitive. Okay, maybe hundred might not cover that much, so let's increase the values to 200. Looks good enough. Okay, so I think number 200, maybe 300, should just do the job. Maybe I can just say 200. Now this value could be varied, so let's make it as a parameter. Now, for most of my tutorial, I always use the null node to set the global parameters uh, named as a controller. But in this time, I'm going to create the controller under OBJ network since I have these start and go under the OBJ network. Okay, so let's create another null node inside OBJ network and I'm going to name it as controller. Alright, and color it to anything you like and I'm going to use this to store all the necessary parameters. Now I don't really need those transform render and misc so I'm just going to hide it out making these invisible. Okay this one as well. Let's just make this invisible and let's create uh, parameters. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna create a folder named as controller and under the controller folder I'm gonna create parameters that I want to use for the geometry network. So the first parameter is to choose how many paths I want to have. So pass number Okay, the range is, I don't know, 0 to 500. Alright, and let's say I want to have 200 paths. I can copy this, go inside and paste that channel or parameter right here using paste relative reference, like this. Now if I go back to the OBJ network and change this value, I can con now control the number of paths that I want to use. Okay, so let's set this to 200. Alright, looks good. Now, <clears throat> uh, right now the path is a bit too, looks a bit too jaggy, so let's make this smooth by using a, a smooth node. Okay, so to do that, I am going to first of all fuse to remove the duplicated points and then use the smooth node to smoothen out geometry. Okay, I mean smoothen out the pass. So now the pass looks a bit more organic. Looks nice. All right. Now, now that I have, I am ready to use this pass for the animation. Let's create a particle which runs on top of this um, path, and later on, this particle will be used as a trigger to trigger on a for the surface to have a gradient value, which then later on be used as a growing seed for the flowers. Okay. 
So to do that, let's try to create animation for the particle using primitive wrangle. Okay, I'm not going to use the solver for this one. I'm just going to use the procedure way based on this frame value. So primitive wrangle particle animation on path. All right, so let's see how I should do that. Okay, um, <clears throat> let's think. I can, in order to, in order to create animation on top of this path, I can use a function from Vex, which is called as <clears throat> bring UV. UV can be used to define the position on top of the primitive, which can be either surface or curve. For the curve, you need to set only the U value for this third value here. So by setting the U00 as a vector, as a VUV, you'll be able to get the position of the position on top of the curve from start to end. Now, if the u is 0, you get the start point positions. If the u is equal to 1, then you get the end position. Simple as that. So, what I am going to do is to change the frame value, which is this value, to a u value so that I can animate the point position on top of the surface, on top of this curve, based on those frames. Okay, so. First thing, first thing first, I need to convert the frame value to something um, readable as a U, U value. So let's define like how many frames is going to be used from one end to the another end. Now each primitive has different uh, parameter, meaning the primitive length. So let's also calculate those primitive lengths so that we can define the speed. So I'm going to use the measure node. <clears throat> For primitive, I'm going to calculate the parameter. Now if you go to the geometry spreadsheet under primitive, you'll be able to get those lengths. All right. Now let's go back and let's also define <clears throat> the speed. So uh, I'm going to create the speed variable. Let's create the parameter called speed. I'm not sure what's the unit here right now, but let's assume we have this float value. And we have this parameter under a primitive attribute. So together with this parameter and speed, we can convert this as a frame value, okay? So what I'm gonna do is to just multiply these two values to estimate the total frame value to go from one end to the another end. So animation anim frame value is equal to speed multiplied by parameter. Okay, now the speed should be, I guess it should be more than 10 since we have the 30 frame is equal to one second. So right now, if the speed is in between zero to one, then the anima animation frame is gonna be too small. So let's increase the range of this speed to zero to, I don't know, 100. Okay, and give some numbers like this okay now I s let's assume we have got this animation frame here next thing I would like to do is to uh, convert the original frame value uh, to a u value together with this animation frame which is going to be the maximum frame value All right so float u 
and the u value should be in between 0 to 1. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is to first of all get the current frame value and divide by the animation frame, which should be the maximum value to go from 0 to 1. So by calculating this one, you should be able to get uh, some flow value from 0 to some uh, value which could go above 1. So let's clamp this so that the maximum should be always equal to 1 by using a minimum function like this. Okay, now we can say that the U sh is not going to exceed more than 1 but keeps in, in between 0 to 1. Now the frame always starts from 1 so I guess it's a good idea to start this frame from 0. So I'm gonna say frame minus 1 divided by animation frame. Okay so that we can say that the frame will start from 0 divided by animation frame. It doesn't really, uh, <coughs> the whole calculation doesn't exceed 1. Now let's assume we have this u value as a animated uh, u value for the curve. Try to use this with the prim uv to get the position on a curve. So vector pause uh, prim uv for and uh, what what I would like to get is the point position under prim num and use u0 zero, 0 as a uv okay and let's create a point to this point position that I have retrieved and remove the original primitive so that we can see where the point is like this okay now, let's, in order to see better, I'm going to copy the sphere to those point position. To see in, if we are really seeing the point running on a curve or not. So the sphere is a bit too large here. Let's remove, reduce this to point zero 0.2 or 3 and merge it with the curve to test out if the sphere is really running on top of those curve or not. Okay, if I start playing okay I can see that the sphere is running yes and with the constant speed and as soon as each of the paths each of the sphere um, comes to the end point, the sphere just stops. Okay, so I think it is working, as I assumed. Now everything is moving at the same timing, so we also want to change the timing randomly so that we can, we can have a bit more organic animation. It's moving a bit too constant right now. Maybe we can change the the speed and we can also change the timing as well okay uh, I have a question what are some method of setting up UV and normals values on lines and curves mm. <clears throat> in order to set the UVs I mean this is this is using this is um, using the I don't know the primitive intrinsic UV value I think so it's not really using a UV that I have set manually but if you want to set manually you can do that based on the perimeter maybe uh, or I don't know <coughs> um, yeah number of points point numbers and so, and like that.
And it doesn't always have to be in between 0 to 1. If you want, want to do it manually, you can just set any kind of numbers as a UV value. And that's not really a problem. <clears throat> okay, so in order to change the speed and offset value, uh, let's start by speed then. So right now, in order to calculate the speed, we have this constant value here. So we have, we can add some kind of noise value or some additional random value to this speed to change the uh, speed, the overall speed. So uh, the sim simplest way is to add random value based on maybe the primitive number with some random seed and set some range for this random speed maybe you can have another parameter for that mm. or you can set the minimum speed and maximum speed maybe that makes more sense so in those case we can say speed is random basically random but we can fit it inside the min speed and max speed like that okay we have now two values and we don't really use this speed parameter anymore so let's replace that set the range from 0 to 100 for both minimum speed and maximum speed and delete this speed let's say from 19 to 70 20 to 70 and then let's see what happens if the <coughs> speed is really changing okay I can see that some points is moving faster some point is moving slower I like that okay I think it's working now that I have those random speed I can also change the random uh, the offset for the time offset for each point to move because right now every point is starting to animate from single frame or initial frame but maybe for some point I want to start from like frame 40 some point might want to start from point 70 or so on so let's try to have uh, let's try to give a random offset or starting frame value okay so to do that let's have another two parameters minimum offset and maximum offset like the speed in this case we are dealing with an integer so we can have integer parameters so see min offset is hi min offset oops I made it as float should be integer and two uh, max offset max offs offset where does this come from okay and let's promote and we can just set any range let's say from 0 to 200 for both of them let's say we want every points the minimum offset is 10 and the maximum is I don't know 100 Okay, so in between those value 10 to 100, the point will start to animate. Maybe 150. Okay, now to use these, where should I use this at? Now in order to use this, we should control this frame value. Okay, so let's have a, another integer value called frame based on a frame 
currently I am subtracting with one so let's have this right here and replace this with the frame now <clears throat> to this one I can um, subtract additional offset value right here with uh, randomized value in between minimum offset to maximum offset same as these same as these values so I'm going to use the same uh, syntax here just change those seed to something else and then change these parameters to min offset and maximum offset okay and in this case uh, okay I think we also need to change this end to an integer so let's change this to an integer and maybe using our int and there is a chance that this value becomes negative which goes uh, below zero so let's say the minimum is always zero I mean yeah minimum is always zero so in this case I'm going to use the maximum function so that doesn't go below zero like this okay a bit long line but like this okay why am I having this one implicit cast from float to int use explicit mm. not sure which uh, I guess this is being used as a frame let me check if I'm getting a right value I'm gonna apply a frame value as an attribute to the primitive and see if I am getting those value uh, where is it okay I realize I am deleting the primitive so I cannot really see the geometry node let's comment these out for now and check the primitive okay so everything is zero that's that's fine okay looks good so some stays zero but goes more than zero right after some frame that's good looks correct so now that I have this frame and then frame divided by animation frame the maximum z go to one all right this should do the job and then remove the primitive let's see let's check this out okay I can see that the, the starting timing varies from frame 10 to frame 100 <coughs> and I can see more spread for those points now maybe the number of points a bit too much right now but we'll see later if this is good or not what's okay what's this all right so far so good <clears throat> um i have another questions how would you select just the start of end points of the lines? How would you select start of end points? What do you mean by start of the end? Uh, or start or the end you mean? S just the start or the end points of the line. If you just want to select the start point or the end points of the curve, I can just use the one way is to use the same preview V and use uh, u as a zero which will give you a start point position 
if you set the u as a one then you get the endpoint <coughs> that's one way using vex uh, another way if the point is in order for the primitive like if you check these point numbers and if the point is in order for each primitive you can get the point array from for primitive using prim points and the first points from this array is always the start point and end point from this array is the end point this is the end point <clears throat> that's one way but it only works if the point is in order now the vertex is always in order so to make it more sure you can use the prim vertices to get the vertex list from the primitive then convert the vertex into point number then you'll be get you'll be able to get the point number for the start and the end point now that sounds a bit too much maybe this is easier all right okay another question if you want to separate the points into individual object how would you go about it I see people using a partition node uh, if you wanted to separate the points into individual objects you mean you want to like I don't know extract the points from primitive one way is just delete the primitive itself and keep the point I don't I have never used the partition node maybe let me check what that does Uh, okay, it's just separating the points based on the group. Oh. I mean the lines don't. Okay, uh, okay, so in order to, you mean in order to split the lines. Oh, I see. Shatter the line. I think I mm, well <clears throat> I don't really know how you can split it uh, one way you could do probably is to uh, break up uh, make the point one of the points unique but uh, it doesn't really split so I guess what I would do is to recreate the primitive based on the point position <clears throat> If the partition works, then I think that's a, I think that's a good idea to use. Uh, I don't know the fastest way. If you want to do the vec, if, if it's in vex ways, I think you just need to recreate the primitive from scratch based on the current point positions. <clears throat> Other than that, I am not sure how you can do that. So maybe the partition node should do the job for that. Or, I don't know, poly split. I've used this for the surface, I'm not sure if it works for the curve. Maybe not. I'm not sure. It says projection curve, so maybe this doesn't really work for the curve. Hmm. The connectivity plus a partition node then using the class okay sounds like a good thing to uh, a good approach I think I'm gonna try it later <clears throat> or maybe we can loop and delete somehow right probably okay I have another comment hope you are keeping well first time on stream have you Thank you. Uh, don't want to interrupt your work. Whatever you do, 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 do give it a whole lot of things. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you for the comment. All right. So, do, 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 do. 
Thank you everybody for the comments. Ah, Car Sally say polycut. Polycut. Ah, alright. <coughs> this seems like uh, this icon really shows cutting the line, so this <laughs> seems like this one seems to work. Shall I look at the help? Breaks, curves, where the attribute crosses the threshold. Yeah, I think this is it. This nose allow you to break curves by deleting points, deleting edges, or splitting edges when they across the threshold. That's like, this sounds like a, a slip. This sounds like a thing. All right. Probably you can use some attributes to cut based on you based on some threshold. Yeah, this seems like a things to do. Currently, the curve doesn't really have a attribute. Uh, maybe this original this cost value can be used from the find shortest pass so let me ch just test this out okay and cut using a cost and base this cost I'm not sure if this has been cut it let's check this out using the color node based on the primitive random Let's see. If we set this to small value. Okay, color is changing dynamically, so it's a bit hard to see. We can just see if the primitive number has been increased. So currently, it's 603 before cutting. 201 so it seems like it's it is cutting okay this seems to work thank you for the info okay where was I where was I so I did created this animation and now it's time to use this point positions to uh, set some uh, informations on top of the surface to trigger a growth attributes on top of the surface let me increase the frame a little bit okay so the original surface that I would like to use is maybe this one or maybe this one yeah and currently I don't really need those guide colors so let's remove those attribute color attributes by deleting the colors what else uh, okay just colors is fine and let's <coughs> use this to have a growth attributes now I'm going to initially create those attributes using attribute create and I'm gonna create it as an uh, integer value called life and starting from let's say one which corresponds to this frame number okay so I want to set like I want to set the the total frame for the flower to grow in terms of the frame number meaning uh, if I want to grow the flower from with 40 frames the maximum f uh, life value will be 40 for this attribute so that if the frame number is, is equal to 1 then you get the first frame flower geometry if if we add the 40 frames then you get the final bloomed flower geometry like that so in this case we are going to create 40 
variations for the anim for the flower animations. 40 frames for the flower animations. Okay, so we need to define how many frames we want to use as a or the maximum life attribute, <clears throat> which is equal to the flower growth speed or the total frame number. <clears throat> okay, so let's go to the controller, create another parameter. which is called life or maximum life for the flower flower max life from 0 to 100 all right <clears throat> Let's set to, I don't know, 30 for now. So 30 is around one second, one point some second. <clears throat> okay, so let's copy this parameter, go back, and let's use it somewhere. Not in here, but uh, maybe inside a solver. So I am going to use the solver to update the this life attributes on a surface based on the position of these uh, animated particles like this and if the <clears throat> point position is close to the surface points then the life count increases until it goes it reaches to life 40 which is the maximum value we set so inside a solver, I'm going to create a point wrangle node <coughs> to control the attributes uh, for each point on the surface. Okay, so let's do that. I am going to refer to the surface and then uh, da, 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 da. Connecting the particle to the second input. And let's name this growth life or just a growth. It's fine. Okay, now <clears throat> when the particle comes closer to the surface points for the first time, I want to trigger those points on the surface that it is it's going to be used as a flower growth positions so meaning in order to make it a, in order to trigger the point what I can do is to set a new group maybe a group called growth or something like that when the point is close enough <clears throat> so these points is moving like these procedurally and at some point the surface is affected with those points based on the search uh, search radius so first thing first I'm going to look for the nearest point from the surface to the <coughs> uh, particles or maybe I can just use the XYZ surface function let me check XYZ surface I'm not sure if can if this can be used XYZ distance. I'm not sure if this can be used with the uh, points. Why is the distance from original closest point of the geometry and of uh, not really sure. Maybe this only works with the primitive. So let's just use nearest point. New point. Point position from the point number and then calculate the distance between the current point position on a surface and to this nearest point position which is from the particle point position 
if it's this this if distance uh, if this distance is small enough which is in which means that if this is in within the search uh, radius then we can uh, set the current surface points as grow group meaning it has been triggered as a growth growth position so if distance is small enough maybe we can set some threshold search radius threshold we can set the point group PTNOM S1 okay this number of radiuses diff varies based on the density of the path or the scale of the geometry so maybe this also might need to be parameterized so going back to the OVJ network we can go to the controller have the another parameter let's call this mm, pass path radius or something path radius and for now let's say from 0 to 1 and let's start with 0.1 maybe that's too big well, let's check okay going back and paste this value here Okay. Now, uh, if it's close enough, if it's if it's in the search, if it's within the search radius from the surface, which is in right now point one, then set the point as grow. Now, in order to check which point has been set as grow, we can visualize those position using a grow group. Maybe set as blue. Okay, let's test this out. Okay, so I can see that the growth group is actually being gra gradually increasing from start point to end point. Some part is not being used but that's fine okay if you increase the radius maybe you can just fill in the whole place that's if you want to do that you can also do that if you increase the path radius to point 2 you should be able to cover more areas this looks fine but I think I am gonna go with point one so uh, going back set to point one all right now um, next I am as soon as it has been applied with the uh, grow group I want to count up the life value so if the grow group is equal to 1 then from next frame I want to increment the life value by 1 for each frame okay so to do that I am going to ha give another point wrangle maybe somewhere around here life count and which only works for the grow point grow group point and what I'm going to do is pretty simple I'm just going to increment the life attribute by one and now the rule here is that it should not in, uh, it should not goes over it should not exceed the maximum value that I have set 
under the controller right here which is the flower maximum life so let's have this as a maximum value as a clamp value so i life is equal to a minimum i life chi max life <coughs> and paste the parameter that I have copied from the controller which is currently 30 all right that should do the job and now the life will go from value 1 to maximum 30 now in order to see if this has been correctly applied if this life has been correctly applied let's color this life itself life value itself using the color node so using the ram from attribute use the life value which is from 1 to the maximum life which is 30 so let's create some gradient value something like this and see what happens okay so you can see some rainbow colors being applied to the surface and this uh, gradient color is showing uh, in which state the flower is in right now if it's purple which means this is still young it's just started blooming if it's red it's stopped growing uh, because it's at the end frame all right looks looks okay looks nice now we can use these uh, attributes values on a surface to actually um, manipulate the or uh, the copy the flower animations on top of those surfaces to do that we need to the next step the next big step is to create the, the animation for this flower the petals and I'm just gonna do it simply uh, in a simple way using some simple technique from KineFX all right so let's keep the surface aside and let's try to create the flower geometry from scratch and what I am going to do I'm just gonna create a, a simple arc and try to create some rotational uh, revolve, revolve geometry based on those arc and trim out a little bit based on some values using vex and animate the open petal uh, using a kinefx so starting from circle okay i think i'm seeing the cache here let me remove the, the cache okay i'm seeing still seeing it So let's change this to polygon and change this to open arc. And since this uh, arc is going to be the base for the the battle, I am going to use a I'm going to change the rate the angles to 0 to 180. Okay, so to create this single half arc like this. Let's also increase the number of points maybe to 30 to make it smoother all right there you go and i would like them looking at the point number of the arc i would like to set this the first point positions to zero 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 for <clears throat> for ease of control so I'm going to move this center to minus 1 to x, dx direction like this so that the center the, the point 0 will come to 
right here on the center on the zero 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 positions to the origin okay now uh, at this point I am going to convert this into a skeleton using a kinefx based uh, node using skeleton node and click stash input there you go you'll be able to get all those attributes which can be used with for the rig control and now <coughs> currently I am the angle of the curve is a bit uh, too how do I say a bit oops where did it go where did my where did you go it's a bit too angled so let me raise up the angle of this curve a little bit so to do that I'm going to create a single transform node and rotate with the z-axis right here maybe minus 45 something like this or maybe minus 60 maybe this value can be parameterized as well let's parameterize this go to the controller open up the parameter interface so I can have a flower <coughs> init angle from 0 to 100 and let's start with the 60 copy this and oops, not here and paste it right all right and currently and this curve is going to be used as the base for the the pedals now I only have single pedal right now but uh, in final <clears throat> as a final geometry I want to use I want to have number of pedals like hundred or maybe more so let's increase the number of layers by just duplicating the same curve to the same position and to do that I'm just going to use this copy to or copy node copy or oh, it doesn't have a copy was it called duplicate okay I'm gonna use this duplicate node Okay, and let's set the number of uh, pedals that I want to have right here. As in result, you'll be able to get uh, the the number of pedals in exact positions with the same geometry, with the same positions, point position, and same primitive. Okay, so this might not might need to be parameterized as well so let's go back to the controller maybe I can just keep this opened okay and this is going to be in an integer value um, num pedal num from 0 to 100 maybe 1 to 100 Okay, then let's start from 50, shall we? Or maybe 80. And then go back to the copy node. Let's paste that value. Alright, now I have 80 um, curves. I can then try to 
move each of the curve using a wrangle but based on the kinfx based wrangle so which is called as rig attribute wrangle all right so let's try to do this and it did it clearly i have 80 okay so in order to control these i can what i can do is to control the rotational uh, rot i can rotate uh, those each of the curve based on controlling the local transform attribute which is in under the geometry spreadsheet under points you have these local transform node uh, transform attribute which is 4x4 four four matrix we can just uh, directly manipulate using rotate or scale or translate to control these values and in this case I'm just going to rotate so that I will be able to have a fan like rotation which is later go later on going to be used as a for the animation to open up the pedal <clears throat> okay so let's test this out um, <clears throat> first of all I'm going to create some value code T which is from 0 to 1 now seem to have some error here let's check point name 0 0.30 already exists okay so it is giving an error because I have duplicated the primitive which and for for each primitive each one each point has its input name and an attribute called name and we have duplicated it duplicated name for each primitive meaning I have in this case I have a 80 point 80 point which shares the same point zero name which is a problem using this rig attribute wrangle so we need to make these name unique for each point in order to use this wrangle node some for some reasons so let's change each of those points name to something unique uh, by using some attribute wrangle I'm gonna use the point wrangle for that point wrangle right after I have duplicated I'm going to rename the point okay first of all change the name the name um, what I'm gonna do is to use the similar uh, syntax which is point underscore plus I'm just gonna transfer the current point number as a name like this okay same for the input name so s at double underscore input name is equal to same as s at name Okay, like that. And what else? Do I need anything else? Mm -hmm. Let me see. I thought this should work. Mm, maybe not. Let me see what else I can do. Uh, let me try by going into the skeleton and restash it. Nope, doesn't work. Let me check. Let me check the name for the point. So input name goes from, okay, which is unique. His name okay this is also unique all right 
So, okay, I have a comment from Paul S. Steve. Add a new rig wrangle. Okay, I'll do that. Rig attribute wrangle. Ah, there you go. Thank you. I'm not sure what is happening with this one, but yeah, seems to have these kind of errors. Okay, so now it should run. Let's try to uh, rotate the points. Okay, where was I? So first of all, I'm going to create a parameter called t which in order to use it for the testing or debugging. And this t is, oops, this t is kind of a um, simulations to see how the flower should grow from the first frame to the 30 frame, which is the maximum life value. So, for, so from frame 1 to frame 30, I'm going to convert it into in between 0 to 1 as a t value, then see how the flower should grow. I'm gonna see it how it should grow under with these curve. Okay, now I have this t value. Let's try to use this t with the rotate function to rotate the local transform matrix. Local transform and based on a t value multiply by I don't know might be t pi <clears throat> for now mm, okay and let's see what happens and using a z axis this is just a test okay so it rotates like these All right, so um, I kind of want to rotate so that it go rotates like these. But in this case, it's just making a circle. So let's try to change the, the angle ratio <coughs> um, based on maybe the point position or anything. And other than that, I also would like to change the rotational like angle for each layers <clears throat> okay each layer should have should change the rotational angle so that I can see the layers when I when I open up the pedal so how do we do that in order to do that we need to have those information from each of the primitive so from each point we can get the primitive number so let's get that first prim is equal to point prims zero at ptnum and get the zero since we only have single primitive correspond to each point so we can just say like this now this primitive should be in between 0 to 29 because we have 30 or maybe no 0 to 78 because we have 80 primitive okay now um, we can then convert this primitive value into um, maybe a layer based value something so let's change this in between 0 to 1 first of all uh, float I'm just gonna call this as L in terms of layer so fit prim which is in between 0 to the number of primitive so n primitives 0 minus 1 and the target is in between 0 to 1 now <clears throat> now I can try to multiply this L to this rotational angle value and see what happens 
okay now I see start to see those layers interesting okay but I can see that the initial curve is not really not changing its angle so I do need to modify that for sure <clears throat> since the first value is equal to zero so that's understandable okay but for now let's just keep it as it is and another thing I could do um, we could change the thing is that if we change the length of this arc it, there might be a chance that this will give you a different result let me just test this out if I scale this up okay well not that much okay forget about it okay so <clears throat> mm. but um, there is a chance that this might change if the number of points changes okay because based on the number of points the total num total number of angles will vary so I I can test that out by resampling the points to something else and I can see that more points I have more angle more rotation I get so that's not really suitable for procedural process and precisionness so even though if I change those point numbers I want to keep the angle the total angle value the same so to to be able to do that I need to get the total number of points and then uh, use it together with the angle right here let's create the variable called angle and move this calculation right here now I'm going to divide the angle by the total number of points in this case and I can get that by using this prim number so prim points zero at prim and getting the length of this array you'll be able to get the number of points okay now by doing this changing the length doesn't really change the total the maximum uh, I mean the total angle changes I think yeah I think it's not really not changing now the end but now the angle difference is a bit too small because I've just divided so I think I need to have another threshold in order to control the maximum angle right here okay other than T since I'm just currently I'm just using this uh, constant angle value called pi so it's, I think it's a good idea to have another threshold maybe use as a uh, named as max ang I'm not sure what the unit this will be maybe a radians all right uh, maybe I shouldn't do it right here but I should do some right after this line <clears throat> if this is the radians then it's a good idea to convert it into radians and for the input for the user input we can use the degrees right 
So let's open up the parameter interface for this max angle. Let's say the maximum is 90. Let's see what happens. Okay, not bad, I think. Now this T is used for the animation. This max angle defines the maximum opening for this curve. Maybe we can just increase this a little bit more, don't I? Okay, let's see. I think, um, yeah, I think it's a good idea to increase this a little bit more. Let's see what happens. Hmm, interesting. Right. <coughs> Actually, I think this is not the way I want to rotate to, but maybe to the different direction. Maybe to this way might be a more good idea not to this way so in that case we can set the angle to negative all right this goes way better now this is more like a fan okay let's increase the max angle to 180 degrees all right looks nice this is more like a fan and this can be a good starting point for the base pedal shape all right and it also looks like a bird <coughs> feather all right so now that I have this uh, geometry, I think it's time to trim out the shape so that it, more, it looks more like a petal shape. Because right now it look the, sh the length of the curve is all the same. And maybe it could be fine, but it could be too artificial. So to make it a bit more organic, we would like to change its shape. Okay, and we also want we also want to uh, relate the frame value with this t. So currently, the maximum uh, life value for the flower is equal to thirty. So if it's if the life is e if the frame is equal to thirty, then uh, we want to set the t to one. If the frame is equal to one, then we want to set the t to zero. So instead of using the T itself, we could create a expression right here. Uh, we could just do the expression within this channel or inside a vex. Maybe we can keep the vex as it is like this. So I'm going to create the expression to use the frame value. So F frame value um, divided by this maximum max um, um, life value for the flower and since t want to start from zero I'm going to subtract the f frame by one for that reason I'm also going to subtract this maximum value by one as well as in result based on the frame value you'll be able to get the value if from 0 to 1 and it go it exceed more than 1 if it goes more than 30 frame now we want to keep this t maximum to 1 so let's use the min function so that it doesn't ex go exceed 1 okay looks good now <coughs> now 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 that we have this um uh, fan opening animation it's time to trim out these lengths for each primitive to shape up 
like a flower. Before doing that, let's try to see in this in three dimension by creating a revolution, revol revolved uh, geometry, so that we it's easy to test out the shape. So to do that, I am going to first of all rotate each of the curve in, with y axis <coughs> uh, in certain degrees, and I'm gonna use the golden ratio. Uh, based on the Fibonacci um, number and for the golden ratio like if you refer to the sunflower seed uh, arrays you you can see you can see in some past that the golden angle for those value for those um, patterns is 170 uh, 137.5 degrees okay which is more like a prime number so <clears throat> not not really like a not really a prime number but it's a golden angle value for the <clears throat> those patterns so we I'm gonna use that value for the rotation so point um, for each primitive I would like to rotate and let's see what's the fastest way to do that mm. just gonna use the point wrangle okay point wrangle I'm gonna call rotate and for each primitive I want to change the rotation angle so first thing first I'm going to get the primitive number just like I did right here so I'm gonna copy this line to get the primitive number from point then convert this point number into an angle so float ang is equal to uh, radians 170 uh, 137.5 degrees converted into radians and this is the golden uh, ratio related angle multiplied by primitive and this will be the angle for each curve now I'm gonna use the matrix to rotate each point first of all create the ident identity matrix and rotate this matrix with this angle using y-axis and change or transform the current point position using the matrix all right looks like a seed or if you look from the side it looks like a spider as well all right now <clears throat> let's make this as a 3d 3d shape and in order to do that i am going to use a revolve now the normal revolution will just give you a one, one uh, three, 360 degrees revolutions which looks like a lump shade now but let's reduce this value right here to something small like 30 degrees and let's make this an open arc and now well it still looks like an open lampshade but looks more like a petal now okay now this number can be maybe changed later but for now this is the geometry that we can use to test out the shape okay now if we change the frame we can see how the animation being made all right so currently doesn't really look like a flower right now so let's change let's reshape the curve so that we can make this animation looks like a flower opening okay <coughs> So the first roll here, I mean this one looks like it looks really nice here. 
Now, we might want to stop the animation somewhere around here. Which, in this case, this goes too much. We have a bottom shape like this. Which might be fine, but I don't know, based on your preference. Now, <clears throat> first rule here, when the frame is at 1, I want to make... I don't really want to show the flower at all. So, but right now, something is showing up. So let's try to remove that. In order to do that, we can make the scale of the whole geometry to zero. Okay, so for the scaling, we can do it right after rig attribute wrangle. Uh, for maybe for each primitive, working with for working with each primitive should do the job. So I'm gonna use the primitive wrangle here. Primitive wrangle. All right. Now let's look at the final frame. All right, and let's call this scale. <coughs> So based on the primitive number, we would like to trim out the scale uh, for for uh, trim out the length of the primitive, okay? And based on the frame value and also the primitive number, okay? So first of all, we have this flame value, uh, and I think it's a good idea to change the frame value in between. 0 to 1. Don't we? I think. Mm. So shall we do that? Um, F is equal to... Or actually, it is same as this T value here. So we can just refer to this value. So I am going to copy this parameter, then go back here and create a another t value here which refers to the channel and just copy this t value here so that we can refer to the same value which is in between 0 to 1 based on the frame all right so if we just want to use this t as a scale value it's pretty easy you just need to say at p multiply by t but doesn't really give you a good effect if you do this and it's really not changing because we are running under a primitive so it's not a we need to access each point but either way <coughs> we don't really want to do this way in order to change the scale but what we want to do is to trim out the curve just like we do using a carve node if we use carve node we can do something like this and we want to control this end trim precisely based on the attribute now the car carve node just just trim out using a single node for every primitive so this one cannot be used i uh, <clears throat> if you if um if you're using for each loop that's fine but that makes a bit slower so instead of using carve node I'm going to use a function for the primitive <coughs> which is under a hidden header of Houdini which we need to call that function using include groom.h if we if we go to the Houdini's um, working path or HFS path, you should be able to see this file, and under this file, you should be able to see some um, additional function that we can use with the vex. And this inside this header, we are able to use one function which can trim the primitive procedurally using a custom value for each primitive. So we're going to use that one. And the name of the add function is called at 
just prim links. And to use this, we don't really need to install any libraries. It's just a built-in function. It's just been hidden. Okay. So this is the name of the function. And for the, in, order, in order to use this, this is the, the void function, which doesn't return anything. But in order to use this, first we need to define the geometry input number, then primitive number. Then set the current parameter for the curves. Now we don't really have this current primitive parameter, so let's calculate that as well. Using the measure node, I'm going to calculate the parameter and then retrieve that parameter. And this is the source length of the curve. Now for the final uh, input, we need to define the, the target length. So if you want to make it shorter, we can say f at parameter multiply by t. Alright. So and does this do it? Hmm. Let me see. It seems like it's getting longer, isn't it? Uh, I think it's fine. So uh, wait a minute. This is the original curve. This is getting longer, so I think I'm doing something wrong here. All right, where am I doing wrong? I think I'm missing something here. All right, perimeter. <coughs> Misspelled, really. Ah, uh, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for that. Okay, now we can see that the curve has been trimmed. Now it's been trimmed globally, just like the carve node. So we want to control that. Where is it? I mean, it's in. It's been trimmed, and also it's the angle is also being changed. All right. Let's see what happens with the final 3D Mon geometry. Okay, not bad. Now we want to apply um, other parameters as well for the scaling. First of all, the final shape. Maybe we want to change the final shape right here because currently it's a bit too wingy and you can see that if we rotate this part is going to be uh, touching intersecting with the other uh, side so we sh we obviously need to reduce the size right here trim out the size here but maybe we can keep the lengths right here we want to keep these lengths smaller so maybe we want to trim the shape like these for the final shape. Alright, so to do this, we want to refer to the primitive number, then maybe we can manually control the shape by using a ramp parameter or something like that. So let's do that. I am going to create the parameter called P based on the pri uh, prim num primitive number prim num and we want to I want to make it as uh, 0 to 1 value so I'm gonna use the fit which is in between 0 to um, n primitives and let's fit it in between 0 to 1 All right and then convert this 0 to 1 linear value with the ch ramp shape ramp all right and then multiply with p 
right here. Okay. Now it's time to reshape the curve. Starting with this linear line. And let's make this Vegier or B spline. I'm gonna make it B spline. Now if I change this, I can now reshape these curve as much as I want. And I am not sure what's the best shape here. I'm just gonna randomly changing its value. In order to see if it's going to look good or not, we should go back to the final shape here. See the final flower shape. Okay, not bad. So just like that, you can just manually create your own petal shape. Maybe that's too custom, but let's say this is also procedural. Alright, let's say I like this flower and how it opens up. Yeah, I think it's not that bad, is it? Maybe I want to have a bit more dynamism. If I increase this a little bit. To have the backside as well. Like a water lily. Okay, let's say I like this one. Now I can go back to the scale and let's say this is a good one. I think I am pretty much ready for the next step. Now, final things that I could do. Currently, I mean this is still okay, but currently if you you can see that the a bit too artificial in terms of this length. I mean, this is so clean, but maybe it's a better, it might be a good, good idea to randomize or make some noise in between these edges in terms of their lengths. So let's do that as well <clears throat> for a final touch. And to do that, we can um, add some additional random value to uh, somewhere somewhere around I don't know to this P or to T maybe to T to P okay so P plus equal to rand and the random value could be based on some maybe primitive number prim num plus some random value random constant value now um this value might be too much and I am misspelling again. Print num. Okay. So I can see the edge length is changing, but maybe this is too much. So let's reduce the randomness. I can get set the randomness right here, multiplying the uh, CHF rand offset.
so with this new parameter you can set some randomness with the edges and now if you go back to the three dimension you can see a bit of irregularness in terms of the petal shape which might not be obvious if you look with this shape but might help All right, now I don't really like that the edge is too sharp, so let's make this a bit roundish. Um, <clears throat> the easiest way is to just use the subdivide node. So in order to use the subdivide, currently the the <clears throat> the resolution is a bit too high. So let's use the resample node to reduce the sampleness. Maybe we could do this right after we moved. So somewhere around here. somewhere before going into the three dimension we could use the resample node to reduce the number of points rotate okay the rotational divisions can also be reduced to some small numbers then we can use a subdivide node to smoothen out the shape maybe we might want to make this three dimension before using the subdivide so I'm gonna use the labs uh, thicken node to create the thick shape thickened shape to make it as a solid geometry like this all right and then use the subdivide node with whatever option you want maybe open subdiv cut milk all right looks more like a flower now I guess all right then like the back side as well okay now let's say I'm good with these now currently the number of points is a bit too much so let's try to reduce those for the animation First thing first, I'm going to use the fuse node and doesn't really work that much so we, let's also do the reduce, poly reduce to try to reduce the number of points okay maybe more that's too much Maybe this is good enough. I mean, if you just need if you just need more high res, you, you can just keep as it is, but it gives you a bit slower visual <coughs> on output. So this one is just for testing. So I'm gonna reduce as much as possible. Okay, let's just reduce fifty percent. Okay, now looks good okay now I have a flower animation goes from single frame uh, frame 1 to frame 30 meaning I have 30 frames for this uh, flower to animate so <clears throat> and what I'm gonna do next is to pack each frame as a geometry uh, used as a packed geometry then later on I can use it, use those packed geometry for 
placing on top of the surface based on the surface attribute that we have created <coughs> okay so in order to pack each frames geometry I am going to use the for each node to access each frame geom shape so I'm gonna use the for each um, number and the total number of loops that I want to do is the total number of maximum life which corresponds to this one so copy this parameter paste it right here so for each iteration for each for loop iterations we want to access to this frame related flower value so to do that we're going to use this time shift node and just delete this value here and instead we're going to give a frame value re um, <coughs> retrieve from the details attribute called iteration so iteration goes from 0 until 29 in this case so uh, let's Hi, let's use that value to shift uh, this time to get the geometry from for a cur for a certain frame value. So detail accessing to the iteration detail attribute iteration. And since iteration starts from zero, but we want to access from frame one, I'm going to add by one. Okay. So let's test this out. I'm going to access to single pass. Now the frame one will give you a nothing because the curve length is zero. So that's understandable. We got one, two, three, four, five. Uh, you are seeing the each frame's shape until frame 30. So it is obviously working. All right. So we can see that each frame's shape has been retrieved. We want to also pack it as a single geometry. Now we can do that inside here or maybe outside as well. So just gonna pack it outside. So it'll be faster. Okay, and for each shape, I would like to apply a corresponding life value, which later on is going to be used together with the copy to subnode. So should I do it for a point or should I do it with a primitive? Mm. Uh, maybe primitive. So <clears throat> I'm going to use the primitive node, primitive wrangle, and access to another detail attribute. Again, an uh, iteration value. iteration and use this iteration to set a life attribute for each geometry at each loop so set or i at life is equal to iteration plus one there you go life and then Let's check, uncheck the single pass, and we'll be able to get 30 packed geometry, and each packed geometry should have the primitive attribute called life from 1 to 30. There you go. Okay, that's good. And each geometry, each packed geometry corresponds to the the corresponding frame value <coughs> for the animation okay let's also change the color of the flower 
just to see that we are just to see that it's clear to see in which uh, state the flower is in right now so color node and for I'm gonna change this to primitive ram from attribute use the life and range is from 1 to maximum life value and let's just use the same infrared so the final color will be red uh, I don't really like the red as a final but let's just say this is a rose okay there you go you have gradient colored pack geometry <clears throat> So now we are ready to now we now I am I have this flower shape together with the surface it is time to relate those two informations together to create the final animation okay so we have this surface which goes which create which have these gradient surface value and we also have this flower shape which is in from first frame to 30 frame <clears throat> okay so based on the color of the surface meaning this gradient value we want to uh, choose what flower to put on top of the surface okay and that's that I want that's what I want to do here Okay, so first thing first, let's define how many flowers we want on top of the surface. Okay, so I am going to create a number of points using scatter node. And let's not use the scatter node for the solver because the solver geometry is changing in each frame. And if we connect with the solver, if we connect scatter node with the solver, at each frame the scatter node is recalculate so that's a waste of calculation time so let's use the <clears throat> one just before connecting to the solver okay so currently we have thousand points maybe we can parameterize this so go back to the controller let's define how many flowers we want now I think we are missing a bunch of parameters we haven't set here. We I'm gonna do that later. So for the new parameter, this is going to be the num flower or flower num. This can become somewhere around here. Let's say that's from zero to thousand test out let's go small I don't know maybe 400 copy so let's give 400 points on fall on top of the surface like that and if you want you can also uncheck this relax iterations to make it more randomish might make it more organic all right now, uh, another thing we want to do is to transfer the life attribute from this solver surface to this point. Because at each frame, the out output of the solver will give you a different life value for each point on a surface. Like these. Okay, so let's re-sample uh, those values for those scatter points. Using point wrangle node using uv sample function sample life <clears throat> so i at life is equal to uv sample we're going to use the we want to get the life value and we want to sample using the point positions and i'm going to use the current point to sample 
And as a result, we should be able to transfer the life value. And to why am I having the float value? Okay, we should change this to integer. All right, like this. Okay. So I think the value has been transferred from surface to point now. And in order to test this out, we can now use the copy two points. And what we want to copy is these bunch of flowers to those points. But we don't want to use all the flowers, but we want to copy based on those attributes, which is this life value. So going back to the option or parameter of this copy to point, I am going to check this piece attributes here and change this attributes to life instead of oops. All right, crashed crashed it. Okay, let me salvage this crashed file. Mm. Okay, where it is? Where is that? Let me I think it's in the temp folder. Closing yet. It's happening. I'm not still seeing the clashed file yet. Hmm. Alright. Let's wait. Let's, let's wait for a while. See what happens. Let me look at the comment. Uh, would it be better to store the point position in an attribute? Um, maybe I missed some. Will this packing method interpolate between integer frames? Packing method interplay between integer frames. Um, I mean, currently I'm <clears throat> in. If you mean interpolating. In terms of the geometry, it doesn't really create an interpolated uh, geometry, but I'm creating the geometry shape for each frame. So in this case, it's not really a problem if you, but it doesn't really give you like a 0.5 frame shape for sure. <clears throat> Say so if you want to vary the growth speed. Uh, okay, I see. Well, you are stuck with uh, what you have in, ter in terms of the pack. So if you have 30 packed geometries, you have to like, even though you change the speed, if you make it slower, some frame, you are seeing like multiple same shape, like maybe from frame one to frame three, you see same shape. If you make it faster, maybe that's not a big problem, but if you make it slower, you see a bunch of same frames, like a glitch, so... <clears throat> we could test that out later. Okay, I think it's not working. Let me just force quit and reopen it. Alright. Do I see... The crashed file. Uh, not really. Not really. Okay. Let's see how much file, how much I saved it from last time. Hopefully, I 
did saved. Okay, so let's reopen. Pushing escape key. Okay, I think I am missing something. I don't know how far I'm missing. Let's check. Okay, so I have this surface animation. That's fine. How about these petals? Do we have it? Okay, I think I have it. So. It's I think it's not a big problem here. One thing I need to be careful is to maybe I should just set the copy to piece uh, attribute right here, like before connecting it. Okay, and I can see that the flower shape is a bit too big compared to the the test geometry, so I might need to scale this down a little bit. Um. Let me look at the comment. I haven't actually tried interpolating positions as an attribute, but in the past I have just used Alembic, which allows you to interpolate for free. Hmm. Interesting. I haven't tried yet as well. Maybe that works. I am not sure. Okay, transform. Let's make this smaller. I don't know how much smaller I need. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. S mm. Am I missing something? Seems like I'm missing something. Yeah, I'm missing the scatter point. Yeah. I just need to do it again. Okay. So let's say the scale of the flower is something around 0 0.05 or 0 0.03. Okay, and it did it. Let's get a point. Don't forget to save. Get a point, and what the, the, the transfer the life value? Life is equal to UV sample one <coughs> life p at p. And we need to make this integer. All right, let's check. So we have this slice life value. Okay, it is increasing. We can also uncheck relaxatory. All right. So I think I am ready. And see what happens. Finger crossed and okay. I'm not seeing anything yet. That's understandable because this is at first frame. If I play it, okay. Slowly, I'm getting something. All right. I think I'm seeing something here. Okay. I am. The animation seems a bit glitchy here. I don't know why. Maybe due to my PC environment, something, maybe a memory problem or something. Let me just move this slider manually. Okay. Okay, I am seeing 
the flower is animating. Maybe the direction of the flower is a bit odd. Yeah, it's not really facing in the right direction. I think I'm missing a normal direction on the surface of, or to this point that I've created. Okay, so let's create the normal point attribute. Okay, now it's facing side, so maybe we need to rotate this flower angle a little bit to we could do this before the for each loop what maybe for the scaling and for the rotation we can do before going into the uh, transform node or oh, for each node maybe some will run here Right, looks good. And we want to do the rotation as well. And we can, I guess we can rotate 90 degrees to X axis. There you go. Let me check it by merging together with the original geometry, which is this one before deleting any attributes <clears throat> there you go there you go I want to really show it with the animation but the playback seems a bit too glitchy it shouldn't be that slow gets due to my PC maybe it's because I have crashed it okay for just for the playback I'm going to remove this thickening for now just to check the animation this should make it faster I think Okay, and I have a problem with my mouse. Let me just clean this up a little bit. Okay. Okay, I, th I guess my hand got too sweaty. Getting those errors. All right, let's see. Okay, still glitchy. So I guess it's a problem with my PC. I might need to restart my PC to get refreshed, but uh, let's just say I'm just gonna test out by hand animating by moving this manually. Okay, it's moving. Just as I want it. Looks good. Re enabling this thicken here. Okay, Rhino is jumping. Let me remove all those unnecessary applications. Shall we? Press VPN. All right, looks good. Uh, maybe render flipbook template. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let's do that. So let me let me see. I am going to make this smooth shaded and see. Let's do the flip hook. Wow, it's pretty slow. 
pretty slow. Let me look at the comment. For example, write out your flower girls as an ABC and then copy to points and then use the attributes to drive the alembic frame intrinsic after the copy. Less procedural because you need to write the disk data which you can vary the speed pretty easily. The like him. Uh, it's, uh, I think that's really smart. Yeah, I think I like your method. Once the animation is being um, fixed it, procedurally, maybe we I could use your process to make it more fast, like playback. Okay, this is too slow. <laughs> uh, let's just stop. Stop it. But, well, I can see that it is running as I want it. Okay, let me try to reopen this one and see if it's gonna fix it or not. close all those windows let me try reopening the Houdini that's okay okay let me just quit it quit Houdini D save this oh, yes and let me reopen this and before doing that let me try if I can clear the cache, do I have any memory? Nope, didn't have any applications to clear the caches. So let's reopen and see if it's gonna work. faster okay it's running just fine okay so this is it this is what I wanted to show today so starting from creating a pass on a surface using find shortest pass then I created the point animation, particle animation, following those paths. And then based on the those particle positions, I have created those, I have triggered the gross uh, values on top of the surface. And those, based on those attributes, I am placing those flower animation. <clears throat> And just like uh, Stefan Holquist is suggesting on the comment, maybe you can also change the speed of the flower growth by creating a cache of this flower animation and change the speed by changing the integration. <coughs> maybe saved as Alembic or I don't know, file cache or anything. <clears throat> that might be a good practice let me try if I can do it now some of you might not be able to write out to Alembic because of the license uh, because I think the the education the free version Printize version doesn't allow you to write Alembic, so let's say I will try writing with a ca file cache. Now, the total frame 
is the same as the max life. So let's save this. From first frame to 30 frame. Okay. Now let's save this as a cache. <clears throat> Flower, All right? And save it. Okay, there you go. You'll be able to have these cached file from 1 to 30. Now maybe Alembic might give you a bit more better, smoother integrations. I'm not sure if this one will be able to use it for those. But let's see. Now, if I go to this, if I want to change the light, uh, speed of the life i can go to the t -t -t. Uh, what i could do is to let's see i still need to use the integer for sure i could go here no mm. in order to change the speed for each point um i could do maybe yeah, i could do somewhere around here to set the <coughs> maximum speed all right uh, or maybe go inside here <coughs> somewhere around here which is uh, reducing the maximum values hmm so instead of um, adding the life as an integer, uh, 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 uh. well, we could just say we could just add an additional offset chi life offset. We'll just multiply with this max life might also be a good idea yeah shall we do that shall we do that uh, well I'll just fix with this integer so let's say for the life offset I'm just gonna give it the same 30 so the, the maximum life will be and probably I should uh, use make this randomized uh, to change the speed. All right, so based on the I don't know point number. Um, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is that what we what I want? Is that what I want? No. Not really. Let's change this with the noise value, shall we? <clears throat> um, so multiply by noise based on the point position, based on some scale. I'm not sure if this is a good value, but Let's assume it is. And yep. Wait. Mm hmm. Hmm. Forget. Forget about this one. I shouldn't do this right here, but 
I should do before get it into the solver somewhere around here so I am going to create some noise map on top of this surface or let's say speed map and I'm gonna create the noise value based on the position multiply by some smooth value which in this case it's in between 0 to 1 I mean around 0 0.3 to 0 0.7 and let's see what the value looks like with the color. Okay, oops. It's a bit hard to see it red to blue okay let's also clamp this which is noise value I presume that this is in between 0 0.3 to 0.7 and remap this into 0 0.0 to 1.0 Okay, this will give you a bit more con contrast. Okay, let's also give the range or smoothness maximum to 10. Okay, so let's say the red is slower. It's the lip. red part is the where the flower grows slower the blue pot is the part where flower grow, grows faster like that and let's change the maximum life value for those part as an integer so are you using a real force keyboard oh yeah yes I am how do you know that? Can you say it from the sound? That's awesome. Uh, I max life is equal to fit. Let's make this as a vowel and or f at vowel fit f at vowel fit. 0, 1, F at bow, 2, 30, 2, no, I should do max life, max life plus offset. Okay, so the max life should be 30, which you can get it from here. And the offset can be any numbers, so let's say 30 as well. Or maybe 20. <clears throat> All right, now I can go back to the geometry spreadsheet to check out the value okay I haven't really set the attribute yet oh, I did so the max life is this one which I can refer to inside the solver and I shouldn't color this this is just to visualize attribute okay okay going back to the solver 
for the life count now instead of using this value I can refer to the i at max life right this one wait a minute why is this zero okay now I have these okay that's great going back to the geometry now look at the life here I'm getting the life value right here that's good now <clears throat> after this there is a chance that I am getting a value that goes over 30 like these now I need to clamp it in between 1 to 30 for the interpolation so I need I probably need another wrangle to remap the life in between in be, into a 1 to 30 frame right and to do that I need to refer to this is just the point information right which also have the max life information as well that's good so I am going to fit the current life value which is in between 1 to i life uh, max life was it called max life yep and we need to remap in between 1 to the the real max life which is the flower max life which is this one 30 and now <clears throat> now where am I using this one <laughs> huh well I can just say load from disk and connect it like this yep I'm getting an error why is that That is because invalid source, unable to read for ah, okay. Shoot. I didn't really need to cache each frame, but just needed to cache everything at once. Just need to cache the first frame value. That's it. Okay, I think this is not that smart as I thought. <laughs> I think I still I guess I need to use Alembic after all. Alright, now But it is it can be used to control the speed for sure. Speed for the flower to go. I guess but it doesn't really interpolate smoothly, I'm not really sure. Maybe the change is not that obvious. Uh, let me change the offset value to something bigger. I don't know. Speed map to... I don't know. 90. <coughs> oh yeah, now I see it. Okay, let's see. Okay, some flower is growing faster, some flower is growing slower. I'm, staying, I'm still seeing green here, but 
because we only have 30 frames the shape is a bit too glitchy <laughs> maybe I need more frames <coughs> oh well I guess in order to make this smoother you just need to increase the number of frames here and then maybe instead of using plus for the offset you can just subtract uh, right here no 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 inside us uh, da, 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 somewhere around here instead of plus maybe using nine minus will give you a faster result I mean if the the original jump original frame you set as a maximum is 90 and uh, let's say offset is 30 and subtract with 30 then the frame is in between 60 to 90 so you always have the smoother smooth interpolation smoother animation if you do plus you always get some glitch if you make it slower so let's try that so the max I uh, for the maximum frame maximum life I'm gonna set it as 90 and offset I'm gonna set it as 60 and reset it let's have it cached Now obviously you have tons of geometries to cache. Now you should be able to have more smoother animations with Varian various speed. Alright, that looks better. Okay, well, thank you for Stefan Holquist for your um, comment. I'm gonna try that out myself later. Okay, that looks good enough. It's not that fast. Okay, so <clears throat> it's a good time to finish, I guess. Uh, it's already like three hours of life. <clears throat> um, I was wondering if I should try to create some Python script to like instantiate these goal geom to create the multiple goal geometry, but that might take a bit too much time. So let me just quit this live stream here for today <clears throat> okay so thank you for watching <clears throat> and hopefully you learned something new here or something interesting here I'm not sure if this setup is good for anything but just for fun I am going to upload the file that I've created to the github and also paste the link to the video description page for this YouTube video so <clears throat> you can download it uh, right after I finish this live stream okay I have a question I have a comment do the Python thing okay if anyone else likes the likes to see the python i can also do that since tomorrow is saturday i don't have a work <clears throat> if not i can just finish it i have a vj vj asking for the python so if anybody else <coughs> Uh, 
And I, for, I guess I also need to clean this up a little bit in terms of the parameters because I haven't set a lot of parameters to this one yet. Okay, so shall we? Shall we? Con shall I continue then? All right. To do that, I gotta reference the one that I created before. So let me create a cheat sheet for myself. Let me reopen another files and place it somewhere else. All right. That's my secret. Da, 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 da. Let me let me have my let me have a time for it a little bit to open up the <clears throat> previous file that I've created to check what I did last time. Okay, so <clears throat> before getting into the Python, let me just clean up uh, the parameters because I haven't passed a lot of parameters to the no controller yet and let's also s group out some of the node which I which are for the debug and which are for the finals so this is for the input geometry let's have a null node Cool geo connected to this test geometry and until here until around here this is the shortest path so let's give a group and somewhere on here, this is the animation. Okay, so let me also check if I have any parameters I can set control later on yeah maybe these for sure minimum speed maximum speed minimum offset maximum offset for the particles okay let's also give a label a separator for the path and the flowers for the path I can drag and drop these pass number, pass radius. Actually, this is particle speed, particle min speed. Can give another separator with the new label. This is for the particle. And I can call this as a particle radius. Okay, particle max speed. Max speed. <coughs> particle minimum offset. Minimum uh, time offset. Let's make this clear. Particle min time offset. Okay, long name. Max. Particle max time offset. Okay, what else? Okay, I realize I didn't drink anything. 
<clears throat> All right. Mm. Okay, I have these value. This is for the flower speed. Okay. Let's have that as a parameter as well. Label flower related. <coughs> so how do I name this? Flower speed map. smoothness map uh, noise just gonna call this flower speed map not that clear but let's say max life offset this is a flower speed offset or growth offset which is related to the maximum life so should this for should go come here yeah, let's say offset life flower life offset hmm. The naming is always, I'm always messing up with the med naming, so you can just come up with the more clear names. Let's get a node. Okay. Scatter node. Yeah, I should control the number of uh, flowers as well. Currently, it's being fixed to 1000. So. Let's give another integer value. Flower number from zero or from one to thousand. Well, let me just just drag and drop this one. Flower num. Right, and let's keep this 500 for the quick simulation. Going into the life, we're going inside the solver. We have life offs. Okay, I'm not using this anymore, so let's just delete it. Okay, I'm actually not using anything, so just gonna delete those two. For the growth, what's this? Particle radius. Currently it's zero. Is it correct? Nope. Should not should not be zero. Should be what was it? Point two? Yeah, I guess it's because I renamed it, so it became zero. Alright. So, getting closer. I'm gonna occur. This is for the petal or the flowers. We have skeleton transform. Yeah, this has been expression. That's good. Name rig. So we have this max angle right here. This can be parameterized as well. So <clears throat> mm, let's give another separator here for the pedal. Okay, a lot of parameters. <laughs> Getting tired. <laughs> All right. Metal max ang from zero to one hundred eighty. 
degrees or I can just drag and drop. Alright. Scale rent okay. Yeah, we can have this value as parameter as well, so pedal edge length offset do we have any parameters nope this one so we do have this uh, resampling here maybe we could parameterize this not sure Maybe we can just keep this constant value. It's up to you. And also, uh, this this should be parameterized because it will actually be used for the shape. So I'm not sure if I can just drag and drop. No. Let's have a new parameter. <coughs> Metal width. Dang. Let's say maximum is 90 degrees. And in order to get that, we can go back here. 40. That was for the revolve. Okay, getting there and the thickness. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep it as constant value, not that important. Pews or reduce, yeah, constant is fine. This one, yeah, the scale is important, I guess. So, this is a f actually a flower scale. So, comes here, flower scale. Zero to one. All right, getting there, almost there. Yeah, too much parameters. Okay, have these cache here. Let me recache it just in case. All right. Now, okay, I think that's it. So I have just organized all the parameters. It's time to try to use the Python to manage these no node, the goal or start, the number of goals and number of start. Now, I think it's a good idea to procedurally change the number of goals and based on your preference. I mean, if you change the input geometry, obviously you might need to change the number of goals and number of uh, start as well. So in order to procedurally change the number of this null node, I think you need to use the Python node to do that. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to try to create that uh, setup. Right. In order to do that, I am going to write all the script inside this controller okay uh, as a python code and uh, executed that by changing the slider value something like that so let's do this i am going to create another separator above path Let's name this uh, controller or handles. Okay, and I'm going to create one slider which is called as num goal from, I don't know, 1 to 10. So my goal is to 
Ch by changing this slider value, I would like to change the number of goal new node. Okay, that's my goal. And in order to do that, uh, my my approach is to the minimum is e equal to one, so you always have at least one goal node. So, and if it goes more than one, what I'm gonna do is to copy the the goal one node uh, for the number of values you have here. So if you have four, then you're just gonna copy the goal one four times and maybe place it next to this goal in a horizontal array. Now you'll be able to have four uh, new node. <clears throat> So that's what I would like to try to do here. Okay, so let me try. So I'm going to open up the edit parameter interface. If you look at the number slider, I mean the number parameter here, you have this callback script. And this is called when you change the slider value okay but you you can only write one line code here so it's a bit hard to write all the necessary script in one line as python so i'm going to write a multi-line script somewhere else and then call that script from this callback script okay so to do that, I'm going to create a, another folder inside this no node, maybe named as a script session. The name doesn't really matter. And then I am going to create a string where I'm going to write an actual script in order to control the number of goal. All right, so Okay, and just to mention you, this is going to be a bit more harder than Vex, I think. <laughs> All right. So for the name of this string, I'm going to change this to, I don't know, <clears throat> something understandable. Goal num script. Goal num script. Since I'm going to deal with the goal number. <clears throat> All right, let's also make this multi-string. And let's set the type to string and language to Python, right? And apply and accept. If you go to script, you have this Python script um, text editor, I mean text uh, box. Now I am going to use, just gonna open up the editor and try to write what I need to do. So first of all, I'm going to import the necessary modules. One is home, one is math. Okay, <clears throat> now, uh, what I want to do is to copy this goal, the single goal that I have, and copy as much as I want based on the number, which is in, which is this file, parameter, num goal. And I think when you do the copying inside using the Python node, what it, what it does is to increment the number from one to two to one by, by, uh, by one, incrementing this value by one for the, the copied value. So if you do the copy, it looks like this. If it names goal one, then the next one will be called goal two, goal three, and goal four, so on. So I think it's a good idea to set the first node as start one and goal one. Okay. So that you can uh, kind of uh, easy to uh, easy to access those values based on uh, from the programs from the programming <coughs> code. All right, so first thing first, I would like to reference the this controller node because I want to access 
this value here. So let's do that. Um, first of all, I'm gonna uh, go to the. I'm gonna get the OBJ network node. I'm gonna call that as parent, and you can get that by whole dot node, which is called as OBJ. Straightforward. All right. Now I wanna get the controller node, which is under the parent. So whole node OBJ under controller. Okay, now um, I also would like to get this goal node as well because that's the one that I want to copy. So goal is equal to o.node which is under obj called as goal1. Okay, so I have now got three node information one is the OBJ network itself, one is the controller, one is the goal that I want to copy. All right. So, uh, first of all, um, let's assume that whenever I change this slider value, I want to delete the, the all goal node which in this case the maximum is 10 so I'm gonna delete the old 10 node except for the first one this one because I, I need this one to to copy for the next time so keeping the first one and if I have goal 2, goal 3, or goal 4 or anything else other than goal 1 then I want to delete all that initially when I change this slider so that I can recreate it with the new value here <coughs> do that I'm gonna search for those names which is in between goal 2 to goal 10 okay <clears throat> so let's do that so uh, da, 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 da. Mm, what was I Or I in range so I know that the maximum is 10 so I'm just gonna use the constant value 10 okay and then I'm gonna get the the goal node here uh, by searching for the goal 2 to goal 10 using the whole dot node obj goal plus change uh, changing i plus one to string or but i plus two because i starts from zero and I want to search from two to ten so actually I can say range nine <coughs> doesn't really matter okay now if this goes well, then I should be able to find several goal node. So let's test that out by creating random node, random goals like these. Okay. And there is a chance that you couldn't find any node because this is right now I have only from goal six, but by using this for loop, you this one is trying to find all the goals from goal 2 to goal 10 so from goal 7 to goal 10 you you don't you not be able to find anything so the result will become none <clears throat> so in that case you don't wanna you cannot do anything with this node so I'm gonna use the try node uh, try function try and accept and only if the node is something then I'm gonna destroy it if not, just pass it. Okay, let's test this out, shall we? Now, in order to run this, 
um, you need to execute this script from somewhere now in order to execute this one you kind of a need to uh, call this <coughs> from somewhere else because currently you cannot really execute it from this controller because it's just it's just a string okay which is inside this script tab so in order to execute this what I'm gonna do is to try to uh, read this string from a callback script that I have mentioned under the numgold parameter which is uh, which is this slider so as soon as I change this slider I want to execute this script that's what I want to do now in order to do that you need to go to this edit parameter interface for this new controller and go to this callback script and then write some simple one line code to execute that script now the things that I need to write here is a first of all I need to uh, reference I mean go to this script node to read this value here so in order to read this I need to go to the node value first just like I did previously so under the OBJ controller okay it's a bit hard to see let's open up the text editor okay so it's a bit smaller it's a bit small it's hard to see and it's too big so the OBJ controller uh, inside a controller I have a parameter called uh, goal num script okay and by using eval you'll be able to get the string value so now this will give you a string text which is the script now what I want to do is to execute that as a Python script and to do that you can use the function called exec like this okay now this is it you can just save this and close it and let's see what happens apply accept and if I move the slider nope nothing happens I think I'm doing something wrong let me open up the Python shell and see debug it okay I am going to let me give a let me comment this out and test it out by printing something if it's going to work then this print one will be called and something will be printed right here okay nothing is happening so I think I'm missing something so let me make sure that the not the name of the script is goal num script yep and going back to the num goal ah wait a minute <laughs> why am I writing it to the unit not here here callback script okay I think I need some <coughs> coffee here okay apply accept now let's see what happens okay I'm seeing something here so it's working now let me delete the comment 
and all right now the all the goals above goal two just been deleted oh hey pablo thank you for the super chat nice image <clears throat> Okay, and everybody is aware of that. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> I wasn't aware. All right, all uh, right. Where was I? So it's working. Now the goal has been deleted. Let's recreate it based on those numbers that I've set. So uh, two. two. So, um, what I need to do now is to uh, get the value from the controller first of all. So let's do that. Goal number is equal to controller term. A goal num val. Okay, so this will give you a integer value, which is in between uh, where was I? Which is in between one to ten. All right. So <clears throat> that's good, and. And what I want to do is to create the loop based on the skull num. And since this can go, if I have, if the number of goal is equal to two, then I just need to create, I just need to copy one goal. So I can subtract by one here for the number of loops or number of copies okay now i can use the for loop with these goal number <coughs> and let's create the, let's just copy this goal node new goal node is equal to um there is a function for the node called copy to and you can copy the node the selected node to anywhere you want in this case we want to copy under the same obj network so i'm going to use the parent node okay now let me try this apply if i change it oops something has happened None type object has no attribute eval. Okay. I might have missed the Okay, it's called num goal. Sorry for that. Num goal. Apply. So if I change the value, oops. Okay, I still have some errors. None type object has no attribute copy two. Seems like I wasn't able to find the copy to the node here ah wait a minute where, where, where was this goal node come from uh, this has to be goal okay <laughs> again try okay now something happened and if I look at this carefully I have now three node. If I look at the controller, the number of number of goal is three. So I have, I, th I think I have successfully created, copied, the same goal value like this. Now it might be a good idea to reset those translate rotation and scale to the the normal value. Maybe the scale to one 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 translate to zero 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 because if I just copy the same one, I just get this big egg shape. Now, if my, that might be fine, that might not be fine. 
you can just decide but for me it might not be fine so we're gonna reset it later okay now uh, the copy works but it is copied to the same positions now that's a bit hard to see so I'm gonna move this to the right side based on the parent based on the number so new goal node let's move this we're using the vector 2 <clears throat> and just want to change the x value so for the y value I'm gonna set to 0 and for the x I'm gonna move it based on the i value and since i starts from 1 I'm gonna i starts from 0 so I'm gonna add it by 1 so that i starts from one, uh, this value starts from 1 and then multiply by the value that I want to use for the move for each node now I guess 1.5 just do the job now let's see apply and try out moving the slider again okay now it looks fine just copying the goal one having the same translate rotation and scale now the problem here is that right after I changed the slider it changed the select the last selection to this goal 7 or the last created node and I no longer this controller is no longer selected so I cannot really move the slider interactively that's not a good thing so <clears throat> right after chain creating everything I'm gonna set the selection to the controller back again so controller dot set current to true apply and there you go now you'll be able to create the node interactively change the number of goals interactively okay so let's try to change the transformation value for those node now in order to change that I think I need to uh, evaluate or set the parameter value and I forgot how to do that so let me go to the Python page for the Houdini okay so first of all I can go to the parameter I can get those parameters I guess so let's get the name which is called T R N S which is all vectors all right so let's get those translate parameter is equal to new goal no dot arm dot t all right and s parm is equal to new goal no dot arm s r parm new goal no dot arm r okay I want to make sure if, if it doesn't give any errors okay now in order to change the parameter values uh, let me see hmm. set In order to get the value, you use eval, but okay, set. I guess this one. Well, interested. Okay, let's try this one. So, in this case, everything is vector three. So.
So t parm is equal to no t parm set whole dot vector three zero 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 s parm is equal to s pos set whole dot vector three one 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 and for the rotation and parm dot set whole dot vector three zero 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 let's see if this is gonna work oops nope uh, none type so seems like I didn't really get the parm value right okay let me just test out with the this one <clears throat> uh, can the code from Houdini be exported to create a uh, programmatic or generative NFT on the blockchain? I guess you could, but it's up to you how you do that. Um, I don't know, maybe export as an Alembic. New goal node form. Let me print this out if I'm getting this value. Python shell. Okay, I'm getting none, so obviously I'm not really getting the parameter that I need. Alright. So let's see. The translate. I'm getting a no null node. Uh, let me look at the node. I think I'm missing something. If anybody know <coughs> about this one, let me know. Okay. So the node class, there is a function called parm, parm path. Return the parameter to the given path or none if the parameter doesn't exist. Right. Well, I thought the parameter name was is equal to t, but seems not. New goal node. Now this is this does exist. So what I'm missing is okay. Let me try to get all the parms and see if I'm getting the name. Okay. For a parm and t parm. All right. I guess this wasn't a list. A generator of har. Huh. Interesting. Hmm. Let me just copy this one. Ok, 
Okay. Ah, okay. I forgot to. Okay, I s forgot to use this one as a pass for the parameter. Stupid me. Exactly. So let me. Uh, and it is actually called T X T Y T Z. That. All right. Okay. Am I still be able to call it as vector value, vector parameter? Maybe not. Yeah. Maybe not. I actually need it to access as a float. That was why. Alright. So now that I know the path name, tparm set ho dot <coughs> no new goal node new goal node dot mm, parm and the name of the path is equal to parm is equal to can I just say tx I think so tx and then set as zero. Wow, this is a lot of line to write. Let me just test this out just for the translate TYTX and TC. Hopefully this works. If not, I'm gonna cry. Nope. T parm is not defined. Where do I have that? Yeah. Sorry. My bad. Okay. Okay, now the translation become yeah, zero. Yeah, finally. Finally. Right. Now SX, SY, SZ, two, one, one, one. And RX, RY, RZ, two, zero, zero, zero. I'm not sure if this is really necessary, but I think it's a good idea, isn't it? <coughs> Okay, everything is good. Now I was I am able to create multiple number of goals and you can do the same with the start if you want. Now let's say I just need the goal and let me place those manually and use it inside a geometry node. Okay, I'm gonna set that as three for now. Let's change the size for this one. Move it. Let's go back to here and enable the enable the debugging color, which was around here, was it? And it's missing the color because it's no longer referring to the geometry that I need. Okay, so for, for looking at the start, I need to rename this to start one. Okay, and for the goal, now I have multiple number of goals. So I need to reference all those goal value. Right. So let's do that. Um, ba, ba, ba. If I have num multiple number of goals, okay, well, I can get the total number of goals by accessing to this value here. So I can copy this parameter and pass it as a value here. <clears throat> P 
paste relative reference okay and what I just need to do is to just loop all those uh, functions three times if I have three goals so for goal num and probably I can start from one and until three like this and then I just need to rename this to goal one two three so I can have i2a i same for the s and tr let's just copy these So now it's accessing to all the spheres, I hope. Is it? I'm not sure. Da, 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 hopefully. At least it is accessing to the first one. Let's move the second one to see if it's affecting. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's now working for the second one. And the third one right on all right <clears throat> now I can just reshape all those three spheres to whatever I want maybe I can make it like these rotate it move it to cover all the legs same for these one I can rotate it make it scaled move it like these the first one move it to the center Scale this up a little bit to this side. Okay. And that's pretty much it. All the other things it just do it's just just it should just do the job. It should also create the shortest past. Yeah, it's not covering the head, but let's say it's fine and looking at the animation you're getting the new path all right just discovered this channel last week and first time able to watch first live stream on it thank you uh, be careful this will reset any goals you set up if you don't fresh that's true it it, it will going to reset <laughs> any <coughs> goals you create uh, right after you change the number of goals so if you want to keep the last created goals then I'm gonna tweak the script a little bit <coughs> going back to the controller maybe we can um, update the script a little bit to make it a bit a little bit smarter which one to delete decide which one to delete in order to do that um, I think it's a good idea to see the last value the last uh, lighter value this one num goal okay in order to get that which is this one let's bring this right here before delete okay and 
we can start deleting which is this i value above this current goal num so if it's if the goal num is equal to 3 then we can delete from 4 does it make sense so uh, right now I'm subtracting by 1 so if it's called 3 then it's 2 wow that's too confusing I'm just gonna delete the subtraction so if its goal number is equal to 3 then this one should be goal num <coughs> no 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 <laughs> it's still it can be still from i but this one right here can be i plus goal num mm, plus i uh, one all right and then this one can be goal num minus one how's that wait a minute where did my script go it just reset it why why okay i'm gonna rewrite it okay so i from in range no doesn't really matter about the total number and i plus goal num plus a one goal num minus one should apply and by doing this you should be able to keep the current goal if it goes more than three if it goes less than three then it will just be deleted though but that's normal yeah just like this okay maybe this is a bit better if it goes two then one of the node will be deleted and it will be recreated in next time <coughs> all right hopefully this works and that's pretty much it for writing the a little Python script to create a controller node or handles. I guess there are several ways to approach for it. Maybe writing, creating a node from scratch or creating like as a geometry might also be one method. <coughs> anyway, uh, this was my method. Maybe you could come up with your own. But hopefully you find this as one reference there's no like correct goal i i assume so <clears throat> okay so this is it and hopefully this is good for you guys um not sure if it if this was helpful i don't use python that much myself <clears throat> But um, for this kind of uh, manual handle work, I needed this kind of a procedural system, so I wanted to create this kind of. I wanted to create these. I wanted. I needed it <coughs> for myself. So I hope you find this somewhat useful as well. <coughs> okay. Well, thank you very much for all those who have come through until this late time right now it's 2 a.m in japan time i've been doing for four hours i think it's around time to finish this <coughs> uh let me know if you have any questions if not i'm gonna end this and as soon as i finish this live i'm gonna upload the file that i've created everything is included uh don't forget to recache this in order to run it. Well, I'm gonna make this unchecked for now. So that you don't get stuck right at here. If you wanna use it, you, you need to save to your own disk and load it <coughs> to make it a faster animation. 
It should still work. All right, that's it. Um, as I said, I'm gonna upload the files and paste the URL to the video description page of this YouTube live stream. You can download it. You can download it right after I upload it, and the video is also going to be archived, so you can watch it later. And I also have a Patreon page if you are interested in this kind of video. Uh, supporting me will be appreciated, <coughs> but not really necessary. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Thank you for all the comments. Um, really appreciate it. <coughs> Otherwise, I've been sleeping. <laughs> all right. That was fun. Okay then, uh, hopefully I'll see you next week as well with different topic. And good night. Good night to you all. Okay, let me finish this live. Mm-hmm.